This next lecture will define social perception and explain the factors that affect it. So let's look at social perception. Um, perception is just another psychological process that creates individual differences. Uh, virtually all management activities rely on perception. Um, it would be nice if we all had accurate social perception skills, but what we don't. So let's look at it. It's the process of interpreting information about another person. It affects how people perceive each other, and especially when they're going through a life change. For example, a pregnancy. Do we think that, oh, she's going to, that person that's pregnant is going to cost time off. Um, they're going to be sick a lot. Um, oh, they're going to be out with that baby. Um, so it affects how we perceive a female in the workplace. It can be culturally determined. We'll perceive things in a certain way because of cultural backgrounds and, and how we were raised. So if we look at a model for social perception, you can see that. The perceiver um, and the characteristics of the perceiver, it uses a perceptual lens to shape how his or her, or how they're going to view that target. Um, and these are our filters, so we're going to look at the ourselves, it's the characteristics of the perceiver, that's who we are. We're going to look at that through a lens. We're going to look at it with attitudes, with our mood, with our self-concept, also with our cognitive structure, and cognitive means how we think. So if we um, look at the characteristics of the target, we're going to look at the physical appearance, the verbal communication, the nonverbal cues, their intentions. Um, and the person's being perceived by, by a lot of different things. It's going to be by the clothing that they're, they wear. Um, and attractiveness also plays a role in it. And attitudes really, they affect our social perception if we go back to how we perceive. Um, and mood has a strong influence on how we perceive someone. And we think differently when we're happy or when we're depressed. So those two, the characteristics of the perceiver, the characteristics of the target, they uh, collapse down into that social perception. And there are barriers with that. We have select selective perception. We stereotype people. Oh my goodness, we have the first impression error. It's um, We have projection, self-fulfilling prophecies. <clears throat> and it would be great if we all had accurate social perception skills, but we don't. Again, the barriers that go into that and, and how we view people, and we'll talk about those um, in this next slide. But then just the characteristics of the situation. Where does it take place? Is it in our home? Is it at work? Uh, is it in the break room? So that will also uh, change our perception. But let's look. Um, at the barriers to social perception, because I want what I want you to look at is um, the selective perception. And that's the first one. We prefer information to support our views. Um, so we, we look at it very selectively of, of how we view a situation. We also um, view with stereotypes. Um, we have generalization about a group of people. Um, we look at their attractiveness. We also have first impression error. We tend to remember um, what we perceive the first time that we see a person. Uh, and then projection, it's also known as false consensus. Um, the effect causes inaccurate perception of others. We project our own beliefs and our own values and think those are the norms. And that happens um, only when we're aware of ourselves and we we project ourselves onto people and people we want people to be similar to us and then there's a self-fulfilling prophecy that we we have um, it's called the Pygmalion effect if you've seen my fair lady and our expectations color how we interact with others and and how we view others with that um, so, how does attributions affect the managerial behavior? So if we have attribution theory, um, it explains how an individual's pinpoint the causes of their own or their other's behaviors. 
And then events can be attributed to an internal source of responsibility or an external source. So what happens with us is attribution patterns differ among individuals. Um, Achievement-oriented individuals, their success or failure, um, they caused it, they either studied or they didn't. Um, women managers are less likely to attribute their success to their own ability. And a lot of attributions are made during the employment interview. So when we talk about attribution, it's what we attribute to that person. So we're looking at them and we make attributions based off of that. And so the biases that come in with that is a fundamental attribution error. The tendency to make attributions to an internal causes uh, causes when forcing or focusing on someone else's behavior. And then self-serving bias. It's a tendency to attribute one success to internal causes and one failure to external causes. So when we succeed, we're going to take credit for it. But when we fail, we blame it on the situation or we blame it on others. So attribution theory is one of those tricky things It's a lot of times hard to explain. But um, looking at it, and, and that's where the self-monitors come in. Either they're with you or against you. You have the on-off switch or that locus of control. And, and we have to be careful of, of how we have our attributional biases. Um, this is going to wrap up our lectures for uh, this module. And I hope you've enjoyed discussing personality. You have some other videos to watch. Um, you also have a discussion post to make and some assessments that you'll need to work through.